friends, it's Gwen. Welcome back to my channel. I thought I would start another reading vlog. I know you just watched one recently, but I wanted to start another one because I'm in the vlogging mood. Why not continue the party? I'm in a thriller mood, which you guys are always asking me about thrillers. So we recently did our Rex by the Bottle live show. And I want to say like 99% of the questions were about thrillers that had different tropes in them from stalkers to serial killers to rich housewives, pretty much everything. You're always looking for thrillers. And Earlier this year, I haven't been that much into thrillers. I was like in a romance mood, but for some reason it has flipped and now I'm all about the thrillers and I just want to go ahead and vlog reading a couple of thrillers. I don't know if they're going to be new releases, old releases, what, um, because I'm very much in a mood reading mood. I started They Never Learned by Lane Fargo and this is a story about an English professor who is a serial killer on campus. Um, and it, I've started it. I'm on page uh, 34. Um, so going into chapter 7. Um, and so far it's told in dual POV. You have Scarlet who is the English professor serial killer and you have Carly, who is a new freshman at the college. Um, at the beginning of her chapter, she's like, actually her parents are driving her to the campus and dropping her off. update of They Never Learn and I'm currently on chapter 20, not very far, page 98. I've just been distracted today. Um, I did go outside and read for a little while. I actually went outside like twice, like a little bit, then I did some stuff, went outside a little bit, did a little bit of more reading out there and then I took a nap. That's why I look probably refreshed. Maybe I still look tired. I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm really, really enjoying it. I love the dual perspective. I'm interested by both perspectives. I'm interested to see where it's going to go, if they're going to cross over, what's going to happen. Is this going to happen? Is this that? And then I was like, no. And then it was like reveal. And I was like, oh my God. So it's intense right now. And I'm just so excited. <laughs> to update you on some reading um, and it is looking stormy out there and the sky there looks really 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 ominous so we're probably gonna get some storms this afternoon I'm not 100% sure sorry this camera is so oh, I can't wait till my screws come in because it's a pain. Anyway, I wanted to update you because last night I did finish They Never Learned by Lane Fargo or Laney Fargo, um, however you say the author's name. They have one other book, the author of Temper, and I did read about it. I don't know if it sounded so interesting to me, but I might pick it up at some point because guys, five out of five stars. I loved this. The only thing you need to know going in um, there are a couple of trigger warnings. Yeah, check out my Goodreads review or my Storygraph review for the trigger warnings, but it's about a female serial killer, dual timeline, set at a college campus, and yeah, that's all you really need to know going in. I will say when I finished it initially, I was like five stars. And 
And then I started second guessing myself and I was like, is it five stars or is it like four and a half or is it four? So then I bumped it down to four and I was like, no, it's a five. So I gave it a five again. So yeah, so I think this is a five. Pretty sure this is a five, but it's somewhere between a four and a five at least. So if you haven't picked this one up, and you want a serial killer story stalking story this one is for you and then next up i picked up the girl before by jp delaney which will be my third jp delaney and they also have another book out and i finally looked up a picture of the author last night and let me just say not what i was expecting yeah so i started this one i don't know too much about it i don't want to know too much about it i've heard it's best not knowing too much about it but i do know it is about two women so it's dual timeline dual pov and it's about them moving into a smart house and things happen also i think i just saw a raindrop maybe you have on my hello lovely box shirt it says canceling all my plans to read another book we both know i wasn't gonna put on pants so i decided to check my library to see if it was open again for curbside or in person or kind of anything um i've talked about this in a couple of other videos but my library had a very weird thing last year it was like open and then it was closed and then it would open for curbside and then close and then like one of the libraries got COVID and they closed and you know all of the stuff to be safe and it wasn't until recently that I was like huh I wonder what's going on with my library. I put a whole bunch of books on hold and I was able to go in and pick them up and I wish I would have brought my camera. I left my phone at home. I left my camera at home. I had nothing with me. I was just so excited. I went and picked up. I put 12 books on hold you guys. So I'm going to show you what I have in here or should I save it for another book haul? I picked up Providence by Caroline Kepnes. And what I love about the library is like it's almost like how I feel about books when I get books from the book exchange. Like I don't have to read these. I can just try them out. If I don't like them, I return them and that's it. That's the beauty of borrowing books at the library and I spent no money obviously. So okay, I'll show you a couple more. I got Looker by Laura Sims, which I heard about this on whose channel did I hear? As like a stalker story and it's short. So I was like, ooh, okay. I saw that they had the Great Gatsby graphic novel. So, and I'm trying to read my six classics this year. So this would be an interesting way to take in the story, I think. Time is set up for the podcast. I have my mic, I have my headphones, and now I just wait for our Jacqueline. Here you go, sweetie. Boy. <laughs> Thank you, sweetie. Welcome. I want to see if you can see up above my door. Oh, you can look. Did you see that bird fly out of there? There's a nest up in the corner there, right above this storm. This is like a storm door. It has like a shutter in it that you can like pull down. But above there, there is a bird's nest and it's a robin's bird's nest. I am climbing in my car because I have some errands to run. It is 10.49. I slept like crap last night. I, okay, so I've been doing my nighttime tea from David's Tea. And I decided that I was going to do the organic chamomile. And they're just little, like, samples. Like, basically, you can make, like, a 16-ounce tea. So that's what I've been doing at night before bed. So I dumped it out and I was like, man, this actually doesn't look like it has any tea in it. It looks just like the chamomile leaf. So um, I had to heat up my water in my kettle and then I had to let it steep for five plus minutes. So I started this process around 930 because my goal is to get in bed by 10. That's what I've been trying to do. Um, anyway, so 
when I brewed it, it was solid yellow. It looked like urine and I tasted it and it was horrible. So I dumped it out and I was like, okay, screw it. I don't like this. And then I was like, Ooh, I'll do the organic mother's helper. So again, I had to reheat up my kettle and let that tea brew for five plus minutes. So then I did that and I checked the ingredient list because I know you can't put like cream in tea that's like has fruit in it or whatever. Um, and I checked the ingredient list, but of course I was tired. So I added a little bit of cream and of course it immediately separated and I was like, Oh my gosh, I'm so tired. So I tried to strain it. That didn't work. So I threw it out and I was like, screw it. I'm just doing my sleepy time tea in the Keurig. I'm ready to get in bed. So I made that, put my cream in there because I like creamy tea. And um, yeah, so then I went to bed. I was in bed by 1030. It almost took me an hour <laughs> to do all of that. Um, so yeah, so I got in bed about 1030. And then I read for about an hour. So then I was asleep by like 1130. And I did have a little bit of trouble like falling asleep. And then I woke up at like 230 in the morning and could not go back to bed until maybe 6.30. And my husband and I, same thing. We both woke up to pee. The dog had to go out. And then we were just like, screw it, we're up. Um, so I did read a little bit in that time. But then I finally did end up going back to sleep. So I didn't read anything yesterday. I was just so busy doing other things. My main objective yesterday was to record um, two episodes of Talk Bookish to Me. Um, so those are recorded and Jacqueline will be editing those. Um, I worked on Instagram. I did the reel yesterday. Um, I went to my library yesterday. Um, yeah, so I was just doing like a ton of other stuff and I didn't have any time to read. So I did read before bed for an hour and I did read this morning. So on The Girl Before, I have made it to page um, 98. And I think this is so weird because the page numbers are here on the inside rather than the outside. I don't know, that's just really weird to me. I've never seen that before. nice and sunny outside and I have a little package that I wanted to share with you guys. I am trying to support um, a lot of small businesses this year and I am always on the lookout for new small black owned businesses and small Asian owned businesses and I found this one it's called Chunks and the lady that runs it like her name is Tiffany and she lives it came from Washington but I know everything is made in China they sent me this little hair like clip for free and I just think it's so cute I have all of their information linked in the description box they have like cute little clips and like butterfly clips and banana clips and like all of the things but what really I wanted were their sunglasses so it says see colorfully and they have these in all different colors but I was basic and I just got the gray ones and it did take a while to ship to me but that's fine but look at these you guys they're so cute I just love them so much. Oh, today has been exhausting from not getting sleep. All of my errands this morning. Um, and then I finally sat down and read a little bit. Um, I am 63% through um, The Girl Before by J.P. Delaney. And I am enjoying it. I don't know if I'm enjoying it quite as much as Playing Nice or The Perfect Wife. Um, but it's definitely interesting. And it just kind of depends depends how things end up in the end. So I still have like 40% to go. I feel like I'm just like chunking my way through this. Um, I am hoping to finish this today, tonight. Um, 
but I thought I should tell you a little bit what it's about because I don't think I have yet. So the girl before is about, like I said, it's dual timeline. So you have like a then and now and it's two different points of view. It's Emma and Jane. Emma is in the then and then Jane is in the now. Um, and basically something tragic happened to each of the women um, that have led them to starting to look for a place to live and there's it's very expensive they can't find a place they really can't afford anything and the realtor tells them about this one particular house that she shows them and she's like yeah it's really really cheap and it's like this gorgeous like super minimalist built by an architect home that's like a smart home and everything like that but the house comes with a lot a lot of rules and there's like this really in-depth uh, application process and you have to have like an interview with the architect and it's interesting because it seems like there are a ton of parallels between the two women in these two timelines. Ugh, this camera, this poor, poor camera. Okay. <laughs> Back to what we were doing. Oh gosh, this angle. I'm sorry guys. My camera is literally falling apart as I'm doing this vlog. It's just slowly getting worse and worse. I should probably stop filming until I get my screws. Um, they should be here this week sometime. So I'm hoping that that improves, <laughs> but I don't know. Anyway, I just finished the Girl Before by J.P. Delaney. And I believe, yes, this was J.P. Delaney's debut as a psychological thriller author. So, um, yeah. Okay, so it's interesting because while I liked stuff about it, there was other things that I just didn't like. And I am surprised. I was looking on Goodreads at like other um, book reviewers things and they didn't like the things that I liked. So that was interesting. Like the smut and the yes daddy yes. I loved that part. Um, but what I didn't like was how it was basically two women's stories from two different timelines and they were so similar. Um, there wasn't enough smart home vibes um, and it was really just trying to figure out the mystery of like what happened and why things are the way they are. <laughs> I have to be super vague obviously because it's a thriller. Um, and I don't know, do I recommend it? It wasn't horrible, but I'm interested because my friend Jacqueline, um, she was there when I picked that up at the book exchange and she read it in April of 2018 and she rated it four stars. And her review says this book was almost like Gone Girl meets Fifty Shades of Grey. Very intriguing and couldn't wait to get to the end. The end was a little drab, so that's why I gave it only four stars. I don't know. There were some things that I kind of predicted and then there were some things that I definitely did not because it just kept like flipping in on itself. Um, do I think it was a satisfying ending? Not really. Um, was I shocked and surprised at some of the twists? Yeah, I was. But with a similar storyline throughout the entire story, um, I don't think it needed to be as repetitive. Um, and I don't know. I, like I said, I wanted more like smart home vibes and I wanted more smut always. So I don't know. Those are my thoughts. I don't know what that means for my rating. I think just probably like a three stars. And to decide what I'm going to read next, I honestly have no idea. Let me show you the books that I got from the library. So I got Looker by Laura Sims, which is a short little thriller. Um, it is a stalker. 
I keep forgetting. But yeah, maybe this will be one that I read. I want to see if I can find the audiobook for something. Um, the Swallows by Lisa Lutz. Close My Eyes by Sophie McKenzie, which I also noticed on Jacqueline's Goodreads. She rated this five out of five stars. And then there's the other J.P. Delaney, which is Believe Me. And I'm not really sure what this one is about. A struggling actor, a Brit in America without a green card, Claire needs work and money to survive, then she gets both, but nothing like she expects. She agrees to become a decoy for a firm of divorce lawyers. So that's probably all I want to read of the synopsis. So that's also definitely a possibility. Also, I picked up Elisa Jewell, The Girls in the Garden. I really don't know too much. Um, I'm not in the mood for this, even though I did pick it up. Um, yeah, I'm not in the mood for that right now. I know that. And probably not this one, but it's like kind of between <laughs> these. So I'll let you know when I decide and I will update you guys when that happens. So oh, I'm going to be reading The Swallows by Lisa Lutz. Um, and this is a book that you guys recommended to me on the Rex by the Bottle live show. I love this cover. And it says that it is the um, provocative novel by the author of The Passenger. And I just got a message from my library that said that my hold is in on that book as well. So might be going back to the library tomorrow, um, sometime this week at least. But I, like I said, with thrillers, I do not like to read a full synopsis. All I know is it says a teacher at a New England prep school ignites a gender war with deadly consequences in this dark and provocative novel by the author of The Passengers. And um, I was flipping through in the beginning and it has like text messages and um, there was a map and I loved it. Oh, look at that map. Oh,